seeking God's will, we must avoid reverting to purely humanistic approaches when facing challenges in our lives. Here now is Jean. Here is a fascinating reversal, as it were, in Joshua chapter 7, beginning with verse 1. The Israelites, however, were unfaithful regarding the things set apart for destruction. And what we'll see is that God said, because of the incredible evil in Jericho, there were certain things that were just set apart for destruction. They were to burn it all, gold and silver and everything was contaminated. They weren't to take any of it for themselves. However, there's Achan. Achan, son of Carmi, son of Zabdi, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of what was set apart, and the Lord's anger burned against the Israelites because of his sin. A deliberate violation. We'll see, of course, that he hid it and denied that he had taken it. We read that Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai. So here we have um, a turn of events right in the middle of this paragraph. We know about Achan, but in spite of this, and of course Joshua is not aware of everything that's going on here, but Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, or Ai it's called, which is near beth Aven, east of Bethel, and told them. And notice what he said, Go up and scout the land. So the men went up and they scouted Ai. And after returning to Joshua, they reported to him, Hey, Joshua, this is going to be a piece of cake. That's the essence of what they're saying in the vernacular. Don't send all the people. Send about two or three thousand men to attack Ai. Since the people of Ai are so few, don't even wear out all our people there. Boy, that just reeks of what? We took Jericho. Oh, no, you didn't. God took Jericho. And what they're saying is, boy, are we great. We can do this again, and we don't even need the number of people that we think we need. It's just a small deal. Right? Wrong. And we're going to see that tragedy happen. We'll see that in a, in a, future, um, a future lesson, a future principle. But, but here's a significant question that I think we need to ask ourselves at this point in time. Why didn't Joshua consult God regarding the next conquest? Because he was human. He sent spies, just as God sent him to. He did it that way. But when those people came back and said, you know, we don't need all these people. Joshua, we can do this. Joshua, at this point in time, yielded to the temptation to listen to these guys and didn't say, wait a minute, guys. Hey, wait a minute. Let's talk to God about this. The fact is that if they had gone to the Lord, the Lord would have told them that they got a problem. They got a problem in the camp. They've got an, a uh, an Achan in the camp that violated the will of God. I believe that God would have revealed it. But Joshua didn't. He reverted to a humanistic approach. And that is so easy to do, isn't it? It actually led to a military disaster. And we'll see more about that in our next principle. But the question is, how can we use the abilities, the wisdom that God has given us in a responsible way and at the same time, always rely on God's strength and wisdom. If you want a beautiful illustration of that in the Old Testament, go to the book of Nehemiah. Because I think Nehemiah illustrates this in an incredible way. In fact, there's a principle from Nehemiah, which I've called balancing the divine and the human. When we're praying and asking God for help, we should also use our own talents and abilities to be a part of the answer to our prayers. But we shouldn't get that out of balance. 
And at this moment, Joshua got it out of balance. If you go into the book of Nehemiah, you have a lot of illustrations of that balance. You can see that balance when he went and came to rebuild the walls in Jerusalem. How for three nights he went out and he surveyed those walls. He put together a plan. And then he went to the people and said, with God's help we can rebuild these walls. With God's help. Can't do it by ourselves. With God's help we can do it. And all during that process they faced incredible challenges from their enemies all around them that had gathered on the east, the west, the north, south. And there came a point in time when they were so threatened by their enemies that it said we didn't sleep at night. We didn't change our clothes. They didn't do it. Nehemiah didn't change his clothes. Nehemiah was leading the troops. And he said we had a trowel in one hand. We had a sword in the other hand. And we worked day and night while we talked to God. While we prayed, Lord, use our human efforts, protect us. And there you see that incredible balance between the human and the divine. Joshua, for a moment in his life, lost it. He lost that balance. And that's a great lesson for all of us, which leads us to really think about this principle. Let me restate it. We must re avoid reverting to purely humanistic approaches when facing challenges in our lives. And why do we do that? Well, how can we avoid it? And as I reflect on this, as I reflect on my own life, it's so easy to get out of balance. When things are going well, I feel like I can do it. I can face these challenges. And it seems like God brings me to the place where I have to say, I can't do it. I need your help, Lord. It reminds me I can't do it by myself. And so, how can we keep that balance in our lives? Well, I, I think it has to become a mindset. We've got to think that way. We need God. Without Him, we can do nothing. And yet, God gives us talents, abilities. He wants to use every gift that He's given us to achieve His purposes in this world. At the base of our mindset is, I need God. I need Him every moment. I need Him every day, no matter what I'm doing. I need Him. doesn't mean I'm going to sit around and say, God, you do it. What it does mean is I need God to utilize my abilities, my talents, to give me wisdom, to rely on others, to help me, to give me strength. You know, we live in a world that's very humanistic. I'm sure you've all heard the statement, whatever your mind can conceive and believe, you can achieve. And you know, there's a lot of truth in the fact that when you conceive an idea and you really believe in it and you believe in yourself and you set about to achieve things, it's amazing that you can achieve a great deal with that kind of thinking. And you know why? Because we're made in the image of God. The fact is we forget it. The fact is that God wants us to trust Him. Yes, to be creative to use our brains, our minds, to think creatively. Yes, to believe in ourselves, but only because of God who is in us. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And without, with Him, all things are possible. With Him, all things are possible. So it's not an easy formula, is it? It's a mindset. It's part of our thinking that God is to be first. We need Him. And whatever we do, we mustn't forget that He is the one ultimately in charge of our lives. And as Paul said in Ephesians, after he says we're to walk worthy, we're to walk in the light, we're to walk in love, he said, finally, be strong in whom? The Lord. Be strong in the Lord and put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to defeat Satan. And there again you see a wonderful balance in the book of Ephesians. 
seeking God's will, living every day with a focus on Him. <laughs>